Hi, everyone. Hello to our Med Missionary family and happy Sabbath. And today I want to welcome uh, City Exodus Ministries. Uh, we have Ernie and Kimberly Leon, and they're from Arizona. And so they're going to be sharing with us today what they are doing in their ministry, City Exodus. And we're really excited to have you. And before we start, why don't we start with a word of prayer? Why don't you pray for us, Father Ernie? Let's bow our heads. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for all that you continually do for each and every one of us. And Lord, as we give our testimony, may you be glorified. And I just thank you, Lord, for just all the rich experiences you've given each and every one of us, and particularly our family. And Lord, I know that, uh, and I hope that at least one person here is encouraged and that you be lifted up, that they may be drawn to you. Thank you, Lord. Please be with us. Forgive us of our sins as I ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 So um, for, for those of you who don't know uh, Kimberly and Ernie, why don't you just share with us a little bit about your, your ministry, City Exodus, and uh, when you started and, and that type of thing? Sure, yeah. And back in, we started the ministry in 2017. We started we got a message um, with a country living message. And so that's why you, the name City Exodus, you know, kind of <laughs> makes sense. And we started vlogging and kind of kind of vlogging our experiences on, on YouTube. We figured that at our age group at that time, like we couldn't really find any resources or anyone else who's kind of doing this country living move. We did, but we found... And we found people who were like retired with pension and <laughs> we're like, you know, retirement so security, and then it didn't make sense to me. It, it you know it couldn't I couldn't relate. Right. And so we just started. started um, we felt impressed to start this, and and in hopes to encourage others who might be in the same situation. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, that's that's how our ministry started in 2017. And as we moved from San Diego to Arizona, um, really the country living message was really what was. Or what our ministry was about, just helping people move out to the country, sharing hosting our experiences, people. hosting people, and seeing how it's like in the country while we were living uh, out here and, mm -hmm. and living even in someone else's home, you know, That's at the right. time. So we were still hosting people at that house. That's right. But at the beginning of 2018 was 20 when I started learning about more of the medical missionary work. And um, I was praying. I remember praying to God and asking him, Lord, what can I contribute to this ministry? I no longer want to work at the hospital, but what can I do? Ernie's, you know, um, involved in, you know, encouraging people to move out of the cities and stuff like that. What can I do? <laughs> and, you know, he, he answered my prayer and he led me from one book to one book. Um, first, it was the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia because I wanted to really learn more. And I was looking around for lifestyle centers and calling around. And at the time, we didn't have the the same salary, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, Lord, I can't afford to go to these lifestyle centers to train right now. How can, how else can I learn? So just a lot of reading and meeting other medical missionaries. And that's how we, at so, least I started. Then you so I just want to clarify here right now, you folks are doing a lot of medical missionary work, right? Yeah. So you live in the country uh, you're building a, a sanitarium where you want to bring people into your home and you already do bring people into your home and you go to people's houses and this kind of thing. But in 2017, when you decided to, to respond to what you, you know, felt the Lord was asking you to do to move to the country, that's basically what it was about. It was moving to the country. It wasn't necessarily medical missionary work at that time. No, no, we had no, no idea. <laughs> in actuality, uh, Sister Joyce, in 2017, we were invited to do, to our first mission trip from a church elder. He invited us to go to the Philippines, and for and, and early, keep in mind, I was I was just baptized in the, at the end in December of 2013. And so, as I got involved into the church, um, 2017 hit around May, and they were asking us to join this mission trip, this medical mission trip. And I was like, "What is that?" You know, so he invited me to do, invited us, and he wanted me to do the evangelistic series. I was like, what? 
no way I'm going to do any Bachelor series. Like out of all things, that's what you're asking me to do. And, and how long is this going to take? I said, three weeks. I said, three weeks. You can't ask three weeks off of work, you know? And we just yeah. both got off. I got off maternity leave with her. And I had paternity leave. I had like two days of PTO left, morning. you know? Mm -hmm. And so anyway, to you know, so we ended up, uh, you know, by God's grace, we were able to get time off, unpaid time off, but mm -hmm. You know, I think we got a tax return that year, and I so worked it out. Yeah, we, and so it ended up like coming just in time for us to cover all our expenses and our bills that we were going to miss if since we took unpaid time off. And so when we went on this mission trip for three weeks, it was just nonstop, nonstop, just from morning devotional to like going to prisons, going door to door, and then doing these medical Making, missions. You know where yeah, they have the optometrist and, yeah. and dental, and and so we were just involved with that. And she was doing some. I think in the Philippines, they did circumcisions. You know, nurses could do that. You know? <laughs> and so, yeah. Yes. So we were doing this nonstop. And then for three weeks, it was just amazing. It was like time with God and time with family combined, 100%. And then back to reality, going back home after that, it was just like back to my 10-hour, 12-hour days. <laughs> yes. I'd be on the phone at work. And all of a sudden, I remember coming back and I would, I would be on the phone still coming off a 10-hour, 11-hour day. It's probably six o'clock at night already. And I'm on the phone still with work. And I go through the garage after I park the car. I'm, I'm running in and my 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 kid, my my child, Kale, my eldest, would run up to me, go, Dad, Dad. And I mean, I'll put it on mute. Hold on, just go on the TV or, or go on the iPad or something. And I'm just, I'll be right there. You know, I'm just kind of grouchy because I'm tired already. I'm still working. And I, and I just remember getting off the phone and that was like the pivotal point. And I just remember you know, thinking to myself, okay, uh, okay, I'm done on the phone. Where, where's, where's, where's Kale? Where's, like he's sleeping oh, it's, already. it's a weeknight. Like, yeah. yeah, she's like, he's, he's asleep. It's like, not, you've been on the phone for hours since you got home. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh no. Okay. That's okay. F okay. Friday. Wait a minute. It's Vespers where we're going to be. Okay. Can't do that. Okay. When am I going to spend time with, it? okay. Sabbath. No, wait, I got to open up the, the church. church. I got deacon duties. So I got to drive separately, but then no, in the after, no, wait, there's homeless ministry. Okay. When are we going to spend Sunday? No, but I got to fix that leak in the that thing that I'm in, meaning, to, you know, there's never any time. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I remember going into my closet and just crying out, Lord, is this it? Just go to work, wait for Sabbath, wait for a, you know, revelation seminar and, or wait for the next mission trip. If, if we have enough money for that one seat and that's it, that's it. And to wait till you come, if that's the case, then, then fine, I'll, I'll do it, Lord. As if this is what you want, then I'll do it. But if not, if there's more, please. Please tell me if there's more. I want to do what we did for three weeks all the time. Right. If we could do that all the time, if there's a way, please. But if not, I'm not going to be picky. I'm going to, whatever your will is. And after that, it was like history from there because God <laughs> sent all these country living messages to me at, by, divine, you know, by. So divine. that mission trip was when? That mission trip was. Uh, we got back like May of 2017 around yeah. that. May of 2017. And then you started seeing all of these country living things yeah. happening. All who 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 was who was it that you were listening to? <laughs> well, well a, friend, a friend of mine, like after we got back and I, I had that prayer in my closet, I remember that week. I think it, I want to say it was that week. My friend sent me a text and said, hey, you got to watch this. Check this out. You know, check this link out. And, you know, people send you stuff all the time. I, yeah, I, like, I'll watch yeah, it. I'll watch it, you know, and thank you for sharing, you know, and, and I didn't really pay attention to it. And then so Sabbath hit that day. And so a bunch of us decided to just hang out at our house afterwards. A lot of the, the youth, you know, so we hung out at our house and, and that brother who sent me that text was like, Hey, Ernie, brother, Ernie, did, did you get my, did you watch that link? I said, Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't get to watch it. I'm like, oh, man, I feel embarrassed. I didn't watch it. Can we watch it right now? I'm like, Okay, let's watch it. So a bunch of us watched it, our friend, our circle of friends, you know, that, that we were watching. So we it came on, it happened to be, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, the forerunner, right? Chris Hudson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we had this little five minute clip, you know, how his clips are very animated and it started talking, I think it was called, and two will be saved or something. And it talked about Lot and Noah mm -hmm. and it was just a short clip, but at the end of the day, it compared Lot and Noah and like it, it posed the question like, well, how did Lot turn out? He's like, he just lot barely survived on his own. You know, he lost his family at the cost of, you want to be a lot, you know, or Noah. do you want to be yeah. lot or Noah? And I'm like, oh, I mean, Noah, <laughs> you know, and then right after that, like an elder of the church, he, he happened to like, I think the following week gave me the book country living. And it's like a short compilation. I read on one right. night. I'm like, honey, we got to go. God is still, you know, because after my conversion, 
Like, you know, it's he like, became, I became, like, like everything. I, yes. I, just wanted, yes, I wanted to redeem the time, you know, mm-hmm. I just want to say yes to it. So when they asked me to do this, go to homeless ministry, <laughs> be a deacon, go to the Philippines, right? Like, yes, yes. As much as I can, you know? Well, I, I'm just very curious. I'm just very curious. Like, okay. You guys are getting ahead of the story here, but um, <laughs> I'm just very curious because it's like, I think that the Lord really blessed you because, you know, according to the Bible, as we follow God's will, we will know the doctrine. And so the more and more that we obey, God reveals more and more of himself to us. And so I believe that when you got baptized in 2013 and you decided to respond and you were faithful, God got revealed. And that's why the Lord is blessing you and will continue to bless you, I think, because like you guys are, you hear something and you apply it, you hear it and you apply it. And that's, that's, that is a very uh, safe way to go about all of this. Um, But I think I just want to share with people. um, I, I found out just before everybody else. I just want everybody else to know that I'm getting to know uh, you guys as everybody else is getting to know you guys too, that I just found out that you were Catholic before. And so how long had you been married and were Catholic, you know, before you became an Adventist? Three years. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was three years. In, well, I was Catholic when we were married mm-hmm. and then she was, she wasn't, she wasn't, she was, a, Adventist. she was a seventh day Adventist, <laughs> meaning that she was an Adventist only on the seventh day. You know? So <laughs> it's over. You know, she was, you know, I don't, I don't and, know. And so like when 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 you met each other, like was the seventh day Adventist part that wasn't as big of an issue because no, it wasn't. No, I mean at all. we were doing the we were doing the same things, like you know, we were hanging out, going to bars and you know, and hang out with friends. And And then what happened? How did you become an Adventist? Um, yeah. So, you know, when we got married, when I, when, well, when we were boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, I told them, you know, if you respect my religion, then I'll respect yours. You know, I go to church on the Sabbath, you know, you can come with me if you want to. I'm Catholic. I'm universal. I can go to any church. God is everywhere. Right. Right. That was my mentality. Right. So it's okay. Right. So when we got married, you know, I thought, you know, I was going to be happy. I had my own family. I finally moved from Las Vegas to to San Diego, you know, and I'm like, you know, I should be happy. But for some reason, I wasn't like something was missing. And, And I knew what it was. I knew that I had gone so far away from God. I had stopped praying. I really, really stopped going to church after I moved to San Diego. So I really knew I felt guilty, like just something was weighing upon me. And, and I knew, I knew deep in in my heart that it was God and I was trying to seek him, but I didn't know how, you know, I grew up, I'm a generational Adventist, but when, you know, when I got baptized growing up, you know, I was, I, I was just always told, you know, if you do this, you're going to go to hell. If you do that, you're going to go to hell, you know? And I'm like, that's it. You can't eat that. You can't eat no, no explanation. Just a bunch of rules with no understanding. Yes. No yes. Very so then, problem. what happened that that all of a sudden now your husband got baptized? I don't know if you you know got rebaptized or like you had your own conversion experience. What yeah. Happened? Just you don't have to you don't have to spend that too much time, but at least you know like was there a pivotal moment or something or I. Well, he would always ask me when I, when, when I knew that something was wrong, I knew that I needed to get closer to God. And he kept asking me questions like, well, why don't you want to go out on Friday nights? We used yeah, to go I was out like, on Why Friday are you changing? Nights. What's going on? You yeah. Know? So I, I started to change. I started to want to read. I started to want to pray more, but again, I didn't know how. Um, my boss actually at my, I, I, at work gave me, was starting to give me Bible studies at work yeah she, at, during lunch <laughs> she was seven day Adventist, your she started, new, yeah. mm-hmm. she started a new job around that time and mm-hmm. i think later on like she her boss was like a, a he he He's was out of the church for like kid, 10 yeah. years and he was a pk up a pastor's kid and and he ended up getting back and he was on fire giving like every yes. bible study and, <laughs> and she happened to be in his department and she started giving him bible studies there. yes praise the lord yeah, yeah. And that's what happened. And when one night he asked me, he goes, do you think your husband would want to have a Bible study at your house? And I'm like, nope, I'm telling you now, he's not going to stay for that. He'll probably leave. He's not going to like it. He's like, just try it. Just tell him that I'm coming over. And I said, okay. 
you know, so I tell him and he's like, no, I'm not staying for that. I'll take Kale, our, our eldest, and we'll go out to the mall or something. Why would I want to do a Bible study? Right. Like, but I had already started to change. I stopped going, you know, watching TV and watching all these junk, you know, and doing. Especially on Fridays. It's like TGIF. <laughs> You're like, why would you do that? Yeah. That's our time together. You know, we have right. work weeks. And, and I've been wanting to like come to church. So I, you know, we've been going to church and. So things were starting to change and he wasn't liking it. So he would always, you know, annoy me. But I was like, this Bible study, I'm going to go out <laughs> and not do it. But I thought, I'm not going to let this guy come into my home and brainwash my wife some more. Like, what is that? No way. You know, so I decided to stay. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and it became his city. And yeah. And so to make, and to make a long story short, I ended up just grilling him and, and right off the bat, like, show me the Sabbath, you know, like where it is. And you know? need the, the study wasn't on the Sabbath either. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he... He ended up showing me from Genesis to Revelation, like a lot of quote, a lot of things on, on, on the Sabbath. And I was just blown away, you know, because I was really active in the Catholic faith. And, you know, and I was I grew up Catholic and not only that, but I went to Catholic school. I I was awarded like a religious studies award, like in high school. Like I thought I was going to go to the priesthood, a lot of things, you know, I was involved in, in a lot in retreats, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, at that point, I felt like I just hit a brick wall, like someone just. Like, I felt so deceived. I felt angry, like that mm -hmm. no one ever told me this. And so I didn't want to talk about it for days, you know, and I, I, I told my, I told Kim, like, yeah, I just don't want to talk about it, you know, because I felt like almost like I was adopted, like someone just dropped yeah. the, the, the bomb on me, you know, like, and I, I tried to tell you, but I couldn't show you. <laughs> Yeah, she didn't show us. She just said she couldn't. So he showed me. Oh, I that 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 makes me feel, you know, because I can feel that that must have been really painful to go through for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but you know, three days later, about two or three days later, I was driving to work. Because I, I go to work like around five o'clock. I start leaving around four thirty, and there, I had nothing playing in the car, nothing to influence my emotions, and all of a sudden, I had chills from the from from my toes to my head, like this quick rush of chills. And all of a sudden, I started seeing like images of myself doing so many great things. Like I started getting puffed up like, oh, yeah, I teach these kids about Jesus. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, I'm so righteous. You know, I'm seeing all these things that I'm doing that I'm so great, you know. And then for some reason, like after a few seconds, it flipped. And all of a sudden, I started seeing myself drinking and smoking and partying. And, and, and to me, that I thought that's not harming anyone. I'm not sinning. I'm, that's, it's okay. But for some reason, this time around, God is showing me all these things. And I'm like. I felt this weight of guilt like on my chest and I just felt so I didn't know how to handle this I was just a rush of emotion of uh of disappointment of guilt and I just started crying that's the only way I could really express myself and I and I was in the car like literally like hyperventilating <laughs> you know like I was like I was I don't cry you know and all of a sudden here I am crying like a little baby you know what I mean and uh and so I pulled over. I looked at myself in the rearview mirror. I'm like, oh no, I can't go to work like this. I pulled over and I, right then and there, I felt this huge conviction. Like I God knew. broke you down. He, I, yeah, I, I literally, it's like probably like the first prayer. It wasn't like a, like an our father. And I didn't do like sign of the cross or something. You know, <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't even think to say that. I just thought, you know, Lord, I just probably the, my very first sincere prayer in my life. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, at this point. And all I said is, Lord, I know that what I saw was truth. And I, I, I don't, I don't even know you. I thought I knew you. I don't even know the Bible. I never even opened the Bible. And, and I just, I just don't know where to start. I want to know you, but I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm, I need you. Please show me, you know, and tell me what I need to do because I, I, I'm sorry. You know, I, and I just made that sincere commitment to want to get to know him. And, and, and after that, I told Kim, I told Kim afterwards and she was like, oh, great. I said, but I'm still not going to be an Adventist. I'm gonna be, I'll be a Bibleist. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not going to be an Adventist. I don't know this yes, Ellen yes, White stuff. And, yep. You know, like, no, no. I don't want to read Ellen White books. <laughs> but then, you know, her boss ended up being a good friend and, and he ended up giving me, I text them and he'd send me stuff. He'd give me like steps to Christ. He'd give me, right. you know, he, whenever I had a question, he'd send some Doug Bachelor, some David Asherix and, you know, <laughs> just answer questions. And, 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 and for this, for six months, because like, I was around May or I want to say March or something mm -hmm. of 2013. And then, uh, maybe even July or so, but I know after six months, I just said, we, we both said, we started learning at some point we were learning the sanctuary message. And Kim was like, <laughs> I was like, why are yeah. you crying? I never knew this. You know, like, I didn't, what? I didn't know anything. Yeah, I, was like, yeah, okay. I was like, yeah. So we were really, I didn't even know how to find things in the Bible. Yeah. So, you know, that is so neat. And not only that, but I think even our marriage improved a lot mm -hmm. when we start 
you know, worshiping together, yes. going to church together and, and learning together. Because there was a point where we thought we were going to separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the religion thing or? Everything, oh, no, just, just, everything just, like I, you know. With marriage and yeah. just with having children is just and working so much it, yeah. financially, mm-hmm. like a lot of things, you know, just typical marriage things. And we're, you know, we're, it's not like we've been married before or something, you know, just, <laughs> you know, I, we got married at, you know, in our thirties, you know, yeah. or my, my thirties, your thirties. <laughs> you know, so, but, you know, so it was just all new. And it just, I guess I just couldn't handle it. I wasn't, I was immature, I guess, you know, I was in, both spiritually and, and in every way, mentally, you know. And so, but anyway, like fast forward, like, you know, those three years, you know, we were able to, to, to survive through that. And, and then when God Praise entered the picture, God. it was like, amen, you know, like that's a whole n- another testimony, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. So after that, we, uh, after that, I made it, we made, I made a commitment to, to learn. And, and then of course we were baptized like six months later and then he became a really good friend even until now. So mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. That is such a beautiful testimony. Amen. Such amen. a beautiful testimony. Oh, so beautiful. I'm so glad that that we're doing this. I mean, that's just an amazing testimony. I mean, I think that should give couples such encouragement, you know, because I mean, marriage is hard, right? Relationships are hard in general, right? And then to see how Jesus can bring people together. Oh, what a blessing that is. It's really true that when you, you really place God at the center of your marriage, you know, no man can break it up. Nothing, yeah. nothing. Yeah, definitely. You know? yeah. I mean, just even just studying for my journey was just, mm-hmm. I had to stop looking at, at you, you know, like at, I always, I'm the first one to always realize that I, I, I mean, I, I realized <laughs> that I was selfish, like in a lot of things. And, and I just started thinking when I started learning more about when I started reading more, I started reading more spirit of prophecy. I started thinking to myself, man, I'm a rotten person. You know, I thought that I was really a nice person, like back then, nice to people and nice when I, whoever I dated, you know, and, but I was really a jerk in relationships, really selfish and put blame on someone else instead of myself, you know, so I started taking ownership and I started changing, thinking like, I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to think that way, you know, and, and at first she thought, you're just being sarcastic. I know who you are. I was like, no, I'm really trying to change. And if you can't let go of the past, <laughs> then we can never move forward, you know? Mm-hmm. And at that point, I think we real, you know, she realized that I was really trying, you know, to change. And I had to let go. And she had, to, really let go. had to let and go. And we had to really pray about it. And then, and yeah, so definitely you know i said really get oh, the praise center the lord that's just that's so beautiful that's so beautiful what, what god did for both of you oh if that was that was okay if the real if the interview goes even better that's a bonus but that's that's a blessing <laughs> you know, are we on marriage missionary like, oh, marriage? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we're not off track here so. <laughs> marriage missionary well i mean we don't want to encourage people to to you know like what a blessing it is though like to to go through this because usually it doesn't end up this way where would someone never, from I, our I, yes yes definitely. yes definitely. Definitely. <laughs> it's been a journey though you know i'm not gonna say it wasn't yes. it wasn't hard you know of course it yeah took, definitely took a lot yeah so Early anyone to go to. no definitely but praise not. god <laughs> praise the lord he was able to you know it takes a constant dying to self right for relationships to work and for families to work yeah. uh, it takes a constant dying to self and so but that's yeah. the way we we are saved right <laughs> dying yeah. to self amen right. right. so right. yeah so all these things that teach us humility are gonna save us yes. yeah. amen yeah make us safe for heaven Yes. So, <laughs> so um, I just want to share with you then, uh, with our audience, um, one of the things that I was really struck by when I spoke to you was how you decided to do medical missionary work. And you, you shared with me, you know, once once you heard the, the message about moving to the country, you were like, okay, Lord, this is what we have to do. But you didn't even have a background in medical missionary work or or this type of thing. It's just very amazing to me that like some people, they're like, I got to learn everything about country living. I got to learn about all of this. And, and then I'm going to get everything just right. And then I'm going to move when everything is just right. You know, and I, you know, what I see with what you are doing is that you you hear this is what we have to do. And you you just 
make your next step. You ask the Lord, yeah. what's my next step? I got to get out, <laughs> you know? And then yeah. the Lord reveals more and more of what he would like for you to do, um, which I think is is great. That's the first thing that I, I learned um, from you. And that that's how I like to go about things too. And because I tell people, you shouldn't make things too complicated. We just want to get used to trusting God and obeying. So I think that's, that's a very important lesson that I hope people are taking away from this. We have to trust and obey, trust and obey and be very quick to obey. Very quick. And obedience always brings blessing. That's like, that's like the reoccurring thing I was, as I was studying out, uh, you know, the Bible. And when we started our country living move, I started reading the conflict series and I saw so many lessons of obedience equals blessing and almost everything pertains to country living. And, you know, God had brought us out of San Diego to move from San Diego to the middle of the desert in Arizona. <laughs> like, why? You know, like right. why the desert. You know, I was thinking Tennessee, Georgia. Oh, we're gonna Washington. get like nice pine trees, and oh, it's gonna be beautiful. We're gonna have a log cabin, <laughs> you know, and you know, a nice creek running through our property, you know. But uh, God said, "No, you need to go to the desert," mm-hmm. and He made it very clear. You know, he so. Did. I'm just curious, like, how do you know He made it very clear? Like, because I think some people will be wondering, like, how did God make that clear to you? Without going into too much detail, I could I could kind of sum it up and fast. I mean, in, 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 as as best as I can. Um, when we prayed for property, when we went to Arizona, thinking that it was going to be just like, what are we going to do? Like have cactus shading us, or <laughs> you know, like what, what are we going to do? You know, so this is we need to raise our own provisions. We're going to we're going to have nopales every day, or what, with rice or you nopales. Know? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind that, but I'm just saying, like, I don't think of that when I think right. of country living. But uh, when we went out and visited. Um, it was, it was gorgeous, you know, and we visited an elder who used to be at our church who moved out here and he kind of pioneered I mean, yes, it over here. Yes. And uh, you go from a San Di- beautiful San Diego, you know, Southern California, and you go to a population of 3000 in the middle <laughs> of the desert, it's kind of, you kind of get surprised at what you see. But, you know, when we saw the agriculture here, we saw mm-hmm. lots of pecans, um, the, sashes, the, the big blue sky like <laughs> you're just stars. surrounded by mountains 360 degrees yes. and it's just a big sky mm-hmm. and the stars would be, and you could just see so far in the horizon like with mountains and and, and, and hills and, and different things it, it's it's very beautiful and then all of a sudden we go to this our our uh, this elder's house we call him uncle uncle nestor and uh he we go to his house and he's growing strawberries and okra everything. And like everything under the sun. I'm like, Sweet potatoes. I hate strawberries. They're sour. <laughs> you know, try these, try these. I was like, okay. Wow. These are sweet. Mm-hmm. You know, what did you do? He said, just put in the dirt. Get out of here. Really? Yeah. You just put in the dirt and water it. I was like, what? So yeah, it, it, we just were, when we made that decision and said, let's try looking for land. If it's God's will, then you'll open an mm-hmm. opportunity. And as, as we prayed and fasted and, and read and kept studying a property came up well i won't even go into the whole story but we ended up getting 40 acres for ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars and that's exactly what we living in california you know it's not like we you know it's the land of <laughs> the land of debt you know like you know so like even if you have you're making so much lifestyle brings you down you know you got then you got bring putting kids in the academy you got mm-hmm. hoa and melarus you got uh you got you got student loans you got you get the new car for the family, you get the nicer house, you, right. you know, it's, you try to keep stop. up with the Joneses that right. you're always in debt. You never have enough. And so that was in our ballpark, you know, like 10,000 was probably even way more. We had to borrow half of that just to get the property, okay. you know, you know, so, uh, so yeah, that, that was one sign. And then the other, the other thing for us was that we were able, when God said, I was thinking, you know, like, oh, okay, well, we got the land, praise, praise the Lord, but how am I going to get the solar, a house, a well, and, you know, I need X amount of dollars, and I'm thinking, okay, so I do got to wait till retirement, because there's no way I'm going to find a a job that pays as much as I can out here Mm -hmm. to keep with both places, like, I can't do that, but God said, sell the house, I said, what? (laughs) I saw the house, so sad, (laughs) you know, it's like, what do you mean sell the house, like, I'm in, I'm in a nice community where I always wanted to be. I'm around my friends I grew up with. I have my family here. You got a nice job. We're getting promoted. We're, man, this is a life. This is a life, the life of being in debt. You know what I mean? I thought, I'm just kidding. But I mean, you know, like, so it's like God will say, I said, okay, Lord, if, wow. You know, so again, like to make a long story short, like the house ends up selling for 
for just oh, the amount the miracles i wish i could go into is. detail but I, I won't just for the sake of time but we were able to sell the house for x amount of dollars in which the comparables were only this low like and there's no way mm-hmm. there's no way it could have happened the mm-hmm. divine answer was that word amen and so we were able to sell our house at a higher a higher uh, price and so we was able to get us started out there and then to top it off not only that but the most important of all was remember like from the philippine mission trip i told i asked god my prayer that night when i was in my closet was lord i want to do this all the time i want to do ministry work and spend time with my family at the same time 100 yeah. percent. and so you know the, the thing that was the icing on the cake was that this place had not been evangelized for over 50 years so just that was like <laughs> okay this is it we're it's gonna we're gonna live out country living right we're gonna evangelize and do the three angels message you know and and it was there we go here that's the answer lord that's confirmation right there and then the bible verse about how god turns yeah yeah yeah, definitely and 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 you know when we look at um you know thinking about water there's all of course there's all these different things that that um you you cut that kind of scare you away the enemy tries to attack right Mm -hmm. so i remember thinking about water and about like how the desert we had some problems like thinking that when we looked on the internet our place like there's this drought and the well waters are running dry mm-hmm. and i'm like lord after we invested all of this it's like you're gonna leave me out to dry i had like israelite experience you know <laughs> and then all and i let me share this with you i think i have it on my screen here if i could share my screen i want to mm-hmm. share this with you guys because i think this is very important in our in our journey to just reaffirm that god even even in Shame on me, you know, with all the things that were happening already, God still answered, answered, you know, that I got you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So imagine me, like after investing all this time and money, we're already ready to, we bought land, we, we sold our home and all of a sudden I'm having doubts now, you know, like, oh, you know, cause I'm not going to have water. Like water is life. You need water for the garden, for provisions, for everything. And all of a sudden I'm hearing all these things that well, he you're says, hearing that around you that people are having issues with water. Yeah. And then there's like local news that are saying, you know, things that we saw on the internet. Like wells are going dry and that kind of thing. Things. But then you know, when you talk to the town, they're saying like, well, yeah, that's not true. That's like, you know, that's kind of half and half. And people are like kind of voting on rights to, you know, like having the government step in or something. Like, this was like at the beginning. Okay. okay. We were kind of so worried. That- So I have this quote here. I want you guys to look at this. Let me share my screen real quick. And I remember when you shared this with me, it was very comforting for me. Yes. And and such confirmation from the Lord that he wanted us to be in the desert. That's right. And so, oops, sorry. Ah, It's blocking it, (laughs) the picture. But it says in Isaiah 43, verses 19 through 20. let Let me just have a quick word of prayer before we read God's word. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, as we open your word, I know your word is truth. And I know that it's the living word and it's full of promises for each of us that might be discouraged. These are words of life and encouragement to us, Lord. So please, please, Lord, be with us all. And may this, may these words may impact at least maybe one person watching. But let it apply to us, Lord, and send us your Holy Spirit as we continue to lift you up, Lord, that then many will be drawn to you. Thank you, Lord, as I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Okay. So in Isaiah 43, I'm going to read it from my Bible. I like, I like turning the pages. I don't know about you guys. But. So Isaiah 43, verses 19 through 21, we read in Isaiah 43, verses 19 to 21, it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. And I was like, we are doing a new thing. You know, this like directly applied to me. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? It's almost like God was like hitting me in the back of the head. Like, come on, don't you know? You know? And I'm like, and, and he says, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. If you look at this picture in the background, that was our property. <laughs> That's our property. It's like, it's barren. It's a desert. It's a wilderness. You know? And then it says, verse 20, the beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I... I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. And I was like, wow. I was like, that's right, Lord. I'm sorry. No one else gives water <laughs> except you. Yeah. You're the one who supplies the water. No, no one else, just you. 
And then to top that off out of the mouth of two or three, right? And so then I find Isaiah 51, verse three, it says, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. And believe Believe me, when I saw that water flowing out of that well at a, like o- over 40 plus gallons a minute, when we hit that water, I was like, oh, so on my knees, thank you. Mm. I was just so reassuring that I could just put my trust in him, you know? Because you had to dig the well. It wasn't already there when you. It's raw yeah. land, raw just raw land. land. Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. God Amen. is good. Yes. So. Uh, I just want to, you know, share with people, maybe you can share with people what you are doing um, as far as building up your site and you're trying to do things as off grid as possible. I was really interested when I went to your website and um, you said that you were building an off grid sanitarium. That's yes. good. That's so what do you what um when you say off-grid sanitarium you're just meaning that it's going to be pretty much all solar powered yes Yes. Yes. and and so i think segueing into that like with country living and with obedience right we thought country living we're good we're going to raise our provisions we're going to teach people how to garden and 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 raise our provision live off grid and preach the three angels messages with the country living message and then all of a sudden we read a quote Every, Every member, member of the, the church, church should take hold of medical missionaries. Like, what? I'm not a doctor. Well, you're a nurse. You, you like, what? What? Are you sure it doesn't say every member who's in the medical field? Like, I think she's missing some words in, in this quote. I'm like, you know? no, you included. Like, no, I, I wanted to go away from medicine, you know? I, I didn't want to be far away from, from Nineveh, from that hospital, you know, from that from blood, from all that nasty stuff. And then now you're telling me we've got to do medical missionary work. Mm-hmm. It's like no way that's why i went into food you know <laughs> in the food industry you know? so uh so yeah when we read that quote you know i was very touched by it kim was touched by it and she found her niche you know and mm-hmm. and uh you know she loved caring for people and and, and doing nursing and then she started uh, you know reading more about it and and so here we are you know so country living and now the medical missionary work and, yes and so as as we've you know experienced you know firsthand she's she's most of the learning is coming from hands-on experience with with kids who you know a rock would hit their head and they bleed a wasp sting a stomach ache of fever you know like different things like that rattlesnake bites. rattlesnake bites you know like different things that people from neighbors dogs being bitten by mm-hmm. neighbor. you've done different. rattlesnake bites mm-hmm. oh yeah i mean yeah. like to do uh to treat them as they're going to the hospital type of thing for antivenom or just total treatment total treatment, total treatment. just just here like natural remedies yeah. yes yes and just use so them. they don't get any anti-venom or anything like that no i'm just curious what did you do for them <laughs> <laughs> so we do charcoal poultices we give them um, echinacea and a milk thistle for the liver so oh, it wow. helps with detox the liver you know um and then the and echinacea. how how many times have you done that I would say yeah. at least, yeah, quite a bit, um, especially more so with with animals. Um, animals. Yeah, a lot of dogs yeah, that get dogs. Yes. Dogs that get bit by rattlesnakes mostly. Their yeah. mouths are already like foaming, and you know, we had one lady at our church get bit by a baby rattlesnake, and she didn't end up going to the hospital. Just poultices, uh, charcoal drinks, and that was it. Three days later, she was fine. Praise yeah. the Lord. We have to, I, I want to talk with you more about like the specifics of that. Maybe on a Thursday with our membership, you can come and, <laughs> and share about that. Oh yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so, so, um, okay, so I found it really interesting when I was talking to you and, you know, I asked you guys, so now that you moved to the country, you know, how are you taking care of things financially? And you said, well, we're just doing ministry. We're doing ministry full-time. And yeah. so, uh, for you, that means we do ministry, we do medical missionary work, we're living our lives, and we believe that the Lord is going to provide for us. Is that, is yeah, that, am that I is, summarizing that? Yes, that is true, that is true. <laughs> it's very so, true. So I think, so, okay, so I, I'm going to segue into that, into the, into the off-grid home sanitarium, because they kind of all 
comes together. So as we started learning the medical missionary work, we started noticing people needing more help, especially when we get, got into those COVID years, like 2020. And so a lot of people where they couldn't get help, right. uh, we would go into their homes and start doing the water therapy and, 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 and things. And, and as more people started getting, uh, you know, like going into 2021, more people wanted to have more camp meetings and things in their home because churches were shut down. Mm -hmm. So we were busier than ever, you know? And so uh, as far as far as like preaching the messages of Mm -hmm. country living, because a lot of people wanted to leave the cities because of, you know, the lockdowns and all these Mm -hmm. things. And so uh, our ministry really, uh, wow, it took, it took a lot, you know, so we started visiting people at homes and um, (laughs) Yeah, we really, we really got in, into the medical missionary work a lot, full, full, full speed ahead. And, and so during this time, like, as we were learning, one of the first things we did, one of our first, before even before COVID, is that one of the first people we helped was my own dad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, he was dying, you know, and he was under a lot of medication. He had heart disease, diabetes, uh, maybe had a uh, AAA, mm-hmm. uh, you know. And uh, he's a quadruple bypass. He's had quadruple mm-hmm. bypass. He has every, and he wanted to give up. And so we, mm. we, there's a way that we could, you know, do natural remedies with him. And so we, you know, parents are parents are parents. You know, like for some reason, yeah, you could tell them all these things, but, they don't but then they'll say like, oh. but if someone else tells them, it's like, wow, that's so profound. You know, like wow, what he said. It's like, isn't that what we just said? So, you know, when we asked them to do this, we, we had in mind that we'd have them go to like this small, intimate place, like this little house and have someone treat, uh, treat him. And at the same time, I said, oh, finally, maybe they'll do Bible studies and, and they'll be won over to Christ because me, I always beat them up with this, with the Sunday law and, you know, and Sabbath and, and nothing would work. I gave them Bible studies. We said, we'll die Catholic, you know, and get into debates. And I wasn't working. So I said, if this is an opportunity, if this is the wedge to the gospel, here it is. Yes. And so they, you know, they went to this place and it it ended up not working out. This person charged them a lot of money and was really absent and and would leave them alone. And they would have to do their treatments themselves by the next day. They they didn't have a cook, so they'd eat like half cooked rice. And I think I know the person that you're talking about. And I think that there should be a warning about this person. Yeah. And so, and so, but, you know, but God could could do great things right and so what happened is we ended up volunteering our time and 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 speaking to this person and and asking him you know we we won't ask for money back we this is my parents salvation you know and so i wanted i we went there we volunteered time and and because there was no space there we ended up going one hour commute like taking a hotel like an hour away and going back and forth every day to finish out the the, and it was during thing. COVID, so he said he was, you know, lacking yeah. some help. And we told them, you know, we're medical missionaries too. We have some experience, you know, um, and we would love to help. So, so, so. give us time with with mm-hmm. them, you know. And and at the end of the day, each day, the, my mom would say, you know what? Well, I mean, before that, she was saying, is this what you guys do? You guys use religion and and health and God to to steal people's money? I said, yeah. this is yeah. not what I want. Was- and so no, so we when we went every day, my my parents would say, you know what, thank you so much for for taking the time to spend with us. I know it's Mother's Day and you could be doing something else, and thank you guys so much. You know they're just very appreciative that we spent like the whole day with them and, and sacrificing time. And so this is where we kind of, you know, at the end of the day, my dad was able to reverse. Praise God, the reverse at all those things. But more importantly, he was able to start using this and he really hated the bible but he started using this and saw that the the print in blue he really loved the explanation and so i said this is the complimentary set to the bible so we bought him that we bought him a uh devotional by ellen white so him and my my mom and my dad both even till this day that was in 2020 he's at great controversy they're at great controversy right now they've accepted the sabbath message um, they're they're worshiping every morning. They're cutting up their fruit in the morning, you know, and, <laughs> and then they're getting on their knees. They're not doing this. They're not their sincere prayer. If you come over to their house, you hear them getting on. Oh Lord, thank you so much for you know sincere prayers. And then they're singing hymns, and they're they're you know they're closer to God now, you know. And so that was the victory, you know. And that's yes. where we really believed our our mindset was that the lesson from it was that. You know, medical missionary work is sure the herbs are great and the water therapy, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, it's spiritual work because it right. always has to lead them to the to gospel, yes. lead them to Christ. Amen. And, and the only way you could do that is by showing that love. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. after 
started getting all these people um, asking for help and there's a need. And so as we went to these homes, we didn't ask for anything. And we actually would buy and send them herbs mm -hmm. and say, we want to just encourage you to, to get healthier. And so we want this to be a, a free gift for you to try these out. To get you started like, here's your protocol. Life. We want to do a Bible study on health and show you, and whether they're atheist or, or, or yeah. different religions, they would always say, would say, would say, this is your protocol, but we want to show you where we get it from. So we give them a health Bible study mm -hmm. from the Bible. And they'd be like, wow. And they, they, and they accept the Bible study. And mm. so we would go to their homes and we'd show it in action and, and we'd worship with them in the morning. We'd hang out with them. We'd walk with them. The kids would sing, the kids would songs. sing songs. We'd incorporate the kids and the kids would help do some of the treatments. And, uh, and then we'd go. And, and no matter how much we put in, you know, you know how, God, the, how it says that you can't outgive God. Well, we put in like, they say $200 or the next thing, you know, we'd have a thousand and then we'd do that. Per, we'd help that person. And we'd spend this on their herbs and, and lodging and, and, you know, cause we didn't want to ever go into their homes and, and stress them out, like where they're going to house it. So we'd always get like a Zero family oh, five with three, you know? And so small someone, it would end up that we would get enough mm -hmm. each time, just enough for each just to get us place. Just to get us there. You mean like <laughs> someone would donate something or... Um, you know, it just be random. out of nowhere. We're like, someone would say like, Hey, uh, brother, Ernie, sister, Kim, you know, like uh, for some reason, someone just told me, like, I don't know why I just have this. I haven't, I've been saving this money for something. And for some reason, someone told me it just, I felt like God was telling me to give this to you for some reason. It just be right on time. Mm -hmm. It was never a lot more and it was never less. It was always just enough. Yeah. Even till this day. Yes. It's always <laughs> just, it's just like, we're just, I'm not used to that, you know, like I'm not used to that. I like to have a little nest egg. I'd mm -hmm. like to, I have this in line and I have like a year's worth of, you know, savings. Well, we took but everything else. Everything yes. was <laughs> liquid. I sold my company stock and 401k, <laughs> you name it, everything's gone. You know, I just said, Hunt, I'm going to invest in you, Lord. And, uh, and it's been like that with a family of five. Your family of five, we have never gone five hungry. Years, yes. I mean, there's a quote, right? There's a quote in, is it Psalms? It says that you'll never leave, he'll never leave us begging for bread, mm -hmm. you know? And it's true. Amen. Oh, okay. I really, I really appreciated how you said that when you go to people's homes, you will go there sometimes for a week and you bring your kids and part of the protocol that you do is that when you start, you know, the day there's, there's a scheduled time for worship. You do morning and evening worship. Yes. We do family worship with them. Mm -hmm. And teach them how to do worship together with everything else i would really like for you to um uh maybe go through that with us during our thursday evening things that would be a wonderful thing for you to show us how you how you do that and uh like what your typical daily schedule would look like that um so I, I really appreciate how you do this um, and just depending upon Jesus to take care of you. This is, this is just amazing medical missionary work, I think, and uh, really very much appreciate hearing about this. And I know that many people who are watching will as well. So are you going mostly locally? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been amazing. You know, like I, I, I remember, uh, you know, even with the money we were making, you know, you think that we'd be able to go to like travel all over the world, you know, but we never get, you know, who really gets to do that. But, you know, it's, we've been, um, I'm just, just this year alone, I think in, we were in the Philippines in April and then we were in Kenya twice already. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's been this, amazing. So we've been doing this and now teaching it and yeah. teaching and preaching it, you know, and, and, and teaching, preaching and healing, right? Yeah, I guess so we've uh, learned so much from yeah. from you and Mercy. Yes, yes. You know, the first time that I I came across your book when you guys you know um I put it out, um I I bought it right away. <laughs> the Lord. Yeah, so we started incorporating it with you know our clients and all the people that we've been helping. So well, praise the Lord. I'm really glad to hear that. I'm I'm learning a lot from you and and. Uh, I know that um, people are going to be very interested to learn more from you. And can can you share with us what your website is? Yes, it's a www.sda, like seven day events, sda city exodus at or dot com. Sorry, dot com. I need email. Yeah. <laughs> sda city dot com. SDA city exodus.com and there they can learn more about where you're going to be this year. I'm just going to quick 
share um, share my screen so that people can see uh, a little bit about that. Let me see where where did I put that? I put that. I think this is going to be a little um, messy. Sorry. Okay, so here you can go to their website and do you see that? Yes, we can see the screen. And uh, I think, you know, people can go here and learn more about you and uh, donate as well. Here's a nice family photo um, and your story here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice family photo. <laughs> By the way, like in the 2017, when uh when we said we're moving to the when we got convicted to 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 move to the country, Kim shared with me some, some great news. She goes, "Oh, by the way, I'm pregnant." <laughs> <laughs> so we had little Maple. Uh, that's that's our our youngest daughter. Yes, Maple. you had little Maple after you moved to the country. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I think that's really true faith. I think a lot of people would be like, "I'm gonna have my kid while I have <laughs> you know all this health insurance and the hospital near me, <laughs> like that." And uh, so, well, praise the Lord. That's, I mean, so we're learning a lot of things from you today. Praise the Lord. And it's just. I owe you about the off grid. I don't think I've talked about that. Let me, let me. The just, off grid sanitarium. Let me, let me, let me uh, uh, elaborate on that a little bit. You know, so okay. country living, if we're raising our own provisions, we're, you know, we're off grid. So I was thinking to myself, I said, well, because we've been going to people's homes, we've been doing things and, and we haven't been charging and we want to continue doing that. Right. And but I can't I don't have a big sanitarium where I could, you know, where I could have like five cabins and, you know, and, and, and things. so how can how can we do that? How can we have like this outpost or this, this, san, uh, this sanitarium? Mm -hmm. And so as and we even start, the area that we're in, there's no electrical lines at all. Yeah. So, so we have to be off grid. Have, yeah. has to be off grid. So if we're so I was thinking to myself, well, if we're off grid because we're counseled to do country living, we're raising our provisions, which means provisions isn't just tomatoes and potatoes and, mm -hmm. and avocados, right? It's it's also herbs, right? Because right. really provisions are some things that we need, right? So when we're sick, we still need mm -hmm. to have provision for that, right? And so so I started thinking to myself, well, if we're off grid, we have our electric bill is how much? Oh, it's zero. Okay. That's right. How much is our water bill? Oh, we don't have a water bill. If our, how much is our grocery bill? Well, it'll probably be little to none. You might need to still buy like maybe some, you know, a few, things, a few yeah. things like salt or something, you know, or a few things. So, so what's stopping us from doing it in our home? And so as we start, I want to share this. Oh, I got to share this quote with you real quick. Uh, let's see if I could find, here it is. So we start. if you think about it, it says uh, here. The Lord gave me great light on health reform. Um, I can't read that letter there. Um, in connection with my husband, I was to be a medical missionary worker. I was to set an example to the church by taking the sick to my sanitarium. <laughs> no, I mean, right? It says my home, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, and caring for them. This I have done, giving the women and children vigorous treatment, you know? Mm -hmm. and so, you know, I started seeing things. The buildings erected are not to be large or expensive. Small local sanitariums are be established. Mm -hmm connection with our training schools you start reading some of these things uh, so what is in your home your church or your dwelling god can use for the restoration of the sick here lies the answer begin to do medical missionary work with the conveniences which you have at hand so we could start where we're at right you don't need to start really big i mean if god allows you to start big mm -hmm. i mean if, if you start small and he decides to give you a million dollars or or money to fund little by little or even a few thousand here and there and you could expand or if he gives you you know, a lot of money at the same time, or if you already have that, then sure. But in our, in our case, like we don't have that money. So can we still do medical missionary work? Yes, in your yeah. home. And so how can we do this work? And so here's the off-grid home sanitarium. If we don't have all these bills, why would we need to charge $10,000 or $5,000? Right. That would be overcharging because I really don't need it. Mm -hmm. But then you say, well, what about the laborers? You need workers mm -hmm. because you need help. You need at least two people per one, you know, Person. person right that you're helping well if you advertise that there'd be free training mm -hmm. would would people volunteer to work yeah and they'd learn so think of it this way if the no buy no sell happened right now and we know that medical missionary work is the work to the end 
which means till Jesus comes, how can we do that? Where would, I mean, like, where would Weimar or Yuchi Pines be at that point if they're running off electric? I'm just saying, I don't know. Maybe they have solar already. I, I'm not sure. But how would they run? Well, they're gonna, we're going to have to do this from our homes. And if 50 people live in the country where you live, and if you could just do one person a month for two weeks or one week a month, that's 50 people a month that you could be helping. A year. A year. A year. Oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. 50 people. Yeah, 50. Like, say, no, no. For our household, if we're living in the country and we could do, we don't want to overburden ourselves. Let's say we just see one person. Let's not, because we're a family, you know, it might be hard for us to, to just go back to back to back to back and see nonstop. You're going to burn yourself out. But if you did one person a, a month, just our house, we could do 12 people a year. But, uh, yeah. You could train potentially six people a month, maybe six people that we could fit in our, in, in this, in this um, room, small. in this, this small house. Then that means that you could train people and encourage them that from the country, they could treat one person a month. Mm -hmm. So if I treated, if I, if we got this concept, all of us that lived in, like, there's probably about, like, uh, let's say, let's say, let's say, tw let's say 20 families this this, yeah. that live just right here, just not including here, across yeah. the way, <laughs> you know, but imagine 20 people doing this in their homes. Mm -hmm. That means that each person doing one person a month, each household, that's 20 souls that we, and, 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 oh, and nearly six times 20, 120 people we could train to do that where they live in Washington, in Oregon, mm -hmm. right? Do you find that as you've been helping people that, that this message is spreading, people are doing this type of thing? Yeah, I think that, I think there's two, it's twofold because there's people who are already living in the country that want to do that in their own home, that they realize, hey, we, we don't need to have like a big property. We can just start now. Even while I'm living in the city, I can help yeah. someone. And when we move, I'm going to put that in my mind that yes. we should actually have a tub and not just have stand in <laughs> showers like what we do. We decide to opt out, not have any bathtubs. I'm like, I'm not giving babies any baths anymore. No way. You know, so yeah, we're going to shower, you know, but then we regretted it, you know? And so yes. maybe if you think that, you know, I think it was WD for Z, another art to build. We always have to have other people right. in it's mind. Right when we're thinking about moving to the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you think of medical missionary work now, it comes into perspective. Not only should we raise enough provisions for people when they come out of the cities or when they move out to the country, like during the time of no buy, no sell, but what about health? Because mm -hmm. we're still giving that message. That's right. So mm -hmm. we can still bring people into our homes and we'll be ready for that to still win souls as we're raising provisions, mm -hmm. as we're still doing the work all the mm -hmm. way to, the, right? Praise the Lord. Yes. That's so exciting. Yes. Exciting, exciting. So when you say sanitarium, this is your home. This is your off-grid home that yes. you're you're in the process of still building right now. It is exactly. actually, it's actually the Completely. build. We were able, praise God, we were able to some some people donated and we were and country home builders, another ministry um, that you could find on YouTube, but they've been a blessing. They helped us build uh this um uh, we call it the treatment room or the the off-grid help center it's like a mm -hmm. guest house pretty much that's equipped to house some students and also to uh treat someone. it's just a one bedroom with a loft so it's oh, not big, very big a, yeah second mm -hmm. story loft and then okay. um, yeah just so, enough people to come to us you know for those right, who are, right. Um, to learn and as much and yes. we, could, we could really start here mm -hmm. so and how big is this home that you um uh, the first floor is like 500 square feet but i think with the loft it became maybe 600 or yeah. i don't know something like that that that's the one that's for the people who are coming to to help yeah. and then the the actual home for people like you're gonna help like one family at a time to come or one person yeah, like one, one person who wants to help with health and then yeah. That one person, if they bring family, we could take maybe four to maybe four to six people. We have a, a trailer next to it, that a tra okay. like a trailer that some people can mm -hmm. stay, in, and then the loft. The loft, the loft is okay. decent. Yeah, okay. it about like three, four people in the loft. Yeah. And that way, also, our family is is kind of we have a separate household with with right. children. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh wow, this was such a blessing to to hear your testimony and um talk with you and and learn about this and I know that I think you know you're you're going to have a lot of people who are very inspired and encouraged by this testimony um and it, it's giving me a lot of 
you know, insight and new ideas and, and this kind of thing. So I, I praise the Lord and I, I thank you for that. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate all of that. I, I'm so grateful that you've taken the time to, to talk to me tonight. And, yeah. um, yeah, we really, you. we've watched a lot of, uh, we've been keeping <laughs> up with Med Missionary yes, and the Facebook Yes, for start too. We were all on there. We met a lot of people through there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's been a good, yeah, I, even though it is what it is, I mean, like it, it has helped us to connect with each other. <laughs> but, so praise the Lord. And, um, yeah, we will continue to be in touch. I hope that people will go to your website, sdacityexodus.com. And um, and I'll be in touch with you guys about Thursday if you're you're available or or um, yeah we'll we'll keep on talking about that and uh, so thank you thank you guys and uh, you mind uh, maybe Kim do you mind praying for us as we close sure let's bow our heads Lord Father in heaven Lord I want to praise your name and I want to thank you for the journey that you put us on Lord and I know that all of us are in this journey lord to get to your kingdom so lord i pray that you strengthen us that you continue to um to help us be more faithful lord help us to always trust and obey and to do your will and your work we thank you father please be with all of us here bless everybody lord and we love you and we thank you again in jesus name i pray amen 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 Thank you, everybody. I hope that you will like and subscribe to the channel. I hope that you will share this video and let people know about City Exodus. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you back next week for another program on Med Missionary. And thank you for joining us today. Okay, God bless you. God bless you all. God bless.